Hello, and welcome to the Black Ponder. I'm Neil Trotter. Today, it's time to take a step back in this video. We're gonna do some introspection. We're gonna do some reflection. We're gonna do some acknowledgement. And we're gonna do some celebration even. Because we've hit the five year mark here at the Black Ponder. That's right. Uh, I've been making philosophical videos on this YouTube channel for five years. Five year anniversary, baby. Let's go. And it's been a lot of fun. It's been a blast. It's been very enjoyable, very educational, very informative. Every year we do an anniversary video and every anniversary video we do a book giveaway to a lucky subscriber, <laughs> right? Uh, because I just want to say thank you to those who have subscribed and interacted, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, comment, <laughs> whatever your comment is. Uh, you know, I said it before and I'll say it again. I'm not motivated at all by subscriber count or um, you know, the number of views I get on my videos or the uh, thumbs up or the thumbs down. You know, I honestly could care less about that stuff. And that's pretty obvious, I guess, with the uh, lo-fi quality of my videos, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, I do appreciate the interaction I get uh, from people on the internet. <laughs> you know, that's fun. It's like the icing on the cake. And, it, and it's a very, very good icing, I will say. When people leave comments like, I very much enjoy your videos. Thank you for making this video. Um, I agree with you. I learned a lot from this video. That's, you know, those are great. You know, they make me feel good. <laughs> it's nice to read that. But to be honest with you, the comments I really enjoy or the interactions I enjoy the most, <laughs> to be completely honest with you, are when people disagree with me and then they say why they disagree with me and they are willing to debate with me and have a critical discussion about that disagreement and we go back and forth for a while that's when it gets the most fun for me right because then I can explore the idea even further I can really put my idea to the stress test and see if, if there's really truth behind what I'm saying and you know, it's very enjoyable. You know, it reminds me a lot of like old school internet <laughs> before web 2.0, where it was difficult to escape into like a camp or a silo or like, you know, your uh, own personal uh, group of people who agree with you all the, all the time <laughs> before like social media became the dominant form of the internet. <laughs> uh, those are the ones I enjoy the best, you know, and it, so, I do appreciate it. It is fun and it makes doing these videos that much more enjoyable for me. And so as a thank you, I, we know we do the giveaways. We do the giveaways to one lucky subscriber. So I'm giving away two books. Two books. Okay. Let me show you which two books I'm giving away. Book number one. I did not even do a video about this book. It just didn't have enough philosophy for me to warrant a video on this channel because this is a philosophy channel and I read a lot of books that I don't do videos about because <laughs> they just don't have enough philosophy. But however, however, uh, this book was one of the best books I've read in 2018 for sure. And here it is right here. Brothers of the Gun, a memoir of the Syrian war. It is by Marwin Hisham and Molly Crabapple. This right here, this is a book of journalism about the Syrian war. Right? Syrian war, very hot topic uh, currently, uh, an issue that has been popular in the, the media. Oftentimes you'll see a lot of people in suits and ties give their opinions and their political analysis about what's going on in the Middle East and the wars that are transpiring there and they're giving you all their opinions, but a lot of it really isn't founded or rooted in the actual experiences of the people directly involved in the incidents, in the situations, in the hardships, in the difficulties, in the turmoils. People who actually live in the country, you know, Syrians actually. 
there's not a lot of reference from that source, right? Granted, it is hard to get that source, right? It's, you know, it's incredibly difficult to get journalism from that perspective. We often hear, unfortunately, how journalists die over in the Middle Eastern countries, particularly Syria, or how they're imprisoned or tortured uh, trying to expose the truth or tell the truth behind the Syrian war. So it is difficult. However, uh, Marwan Hisham, who is a Syrian, who lived through the Syrian war and who escaped, Syrian war is still going on, he doesn't live in Syria anymore, but he was a journalist inside Syria that was able to tell his personal experience during the Syrian war and all this, the stuff that happened, the things that happened to him. And he told them to this journalist, he worked together with this journalist right here, Molly Crabapple, who was able to record what he was saying. And they, he did it covertly, some sort of phone activity he did secretly. Uh, and it was very dangerous. He did it undercover, because if he was caught uh, telling his story to like journalists outside of his country, you know, very, very bad things, dire things would have happened to him. So he was a brave man for doing that. But by doing that, we now get firsthand accounts of what was going on, you know, things that he directly experienced as a Syrian, as somebody who grew up, grew up with the Muslim faith, dealing with radical fundamental Islam in different kinds of Muslim sects. He was able to tell that story to Molly Crabapple, who recorded it in this book. And not only did she record it via text, Molly Crabapple is also an artist. So she was able to draw scenes that directly depict what uh, Marwan Hisham uh, told her, you know, because he couldn't take pictures, right? Because, you, you know, you can't take pictures over there, right? Because, you know, journalism is very dangerous. Somebody see you taking pictures, uh, you know, that could be your death sentence, right? And it's not just you know, the horrible things that have gone on and the, the terrible uh, situations that have transpired over there. It's also people, you know, trying to live their lives, you know, trying to make the best of what they got. It's also the Syrian culture that's going on. You know, it's people, people's livelihoods that are happening. So you also get this cultural perspective as well which is important, you know, it humanizes the story of the Syrian war. It's a great read because now, now when you think about the, the situation that's going on over there, your opinion, your ideas about the Syrian war can be informed, can be founded off of the actual experience of people that are going through the experience directly, that have been directly involved by the events of the Syrian war, and that, that's very important. We can't just rely on theoretical political analysis. When we have the opportunity to listen to the people directly involved in the event, the people who've actually lived through the experience, I think that we should take advantage of listening to their story, because then we can really get the closest sense of the true nature of the situation. Then we can get the best information, and then develop opinions and ideas and conclusions based off of that strong truth. So that's one book. The other book I want to share with you, uh, I, I did do a video on this book. This is the, the best book I've read in 2018. It's called I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shreya. <laughs> and I did not know how small this book was. <laughs> it's really tiny. I, I read it on ebook on the Kindle, but you know, I did read through it very quickly, so it makes sense. But despite how small it is, it has a huge amount of truth, huge amount of truth in this, a huge amount of valuable information. So this is a memoir, another memoir, but this one is about a transgender person and their experience with transgender identity, identity coming out as transgender and expressing their true nature, you know, who they truly are and the hardship and the difficulty the consequences of that. But the, what's masterful about this is that uh, Vivek Shreya, she talks about her personal experience 
very personal experience, very personal experience, but she is able to make that very personal experience universal you know, in a way that anybody can relate to it, which you, know, you would think that's crazy. Like, how can you do that? How can you make it so everybody can relate to this very specific uh, personal experience of transgender identity? But what's masterful about this book is that it will stop and it will make you think. And it will make you think about, okay, there's an interconnection here between me and this author. And the fact that this is so difficult for this author to express their tr the truth behind who they really are, that has an adverse, a negative impact on me. You know, let alone a negative impact on this person, which it definitely did but it also has a negative impact on everybody. And that's where the philosophy comes in. And if you wanna know about that, check out my video. Uh, it's masterful, the story that was told here. And again, just like in that book, Brothers of the Gun, where you know it's a matter of life and death, journalism from, the Syri from Syria about the Syrian war. You know, you, people have died trying to expose the truth about that war. Just like that, uh, there are huge social consequences for being transgender in this world. Even in America, you know, it's not easy to come out as transgender, right? Uh, you know, very bad things can happen to you if you identify in that way. Uh, you know, you can even get killed in some places in America, and that, that's sad to say, but it's true. So I really do respect and appreciate the bravery that this author has to tell their story, to tell her story. You know, that's very brave of her to do that and, you know, to have the opportunity to learn from her personal story. You know, to give give me that opportunity is, you know, I really appreciate that. And I learned a tremendous amount from this book. And I think somebody else can learn a lot from this book too. That's why I'm giving it away. So these are the two books I'm giving away, right? And we're giving them away to one lucky subscriber. To qualify, you have to have been a subscriber as of the upload date and time of this video. You can't watch this video, see those books and say, ooh, I want those books, I'm gonna subscribe now. No, it doesn't work like that. We don't try to inflate numbers <laughs> with giveaways. This is a thank you, this is a thank you, this is a, a notion of appreciation from me to you. So you already have to have been subscribed for you to qualify to win the, the books. And also I have to be able to tell that you are a subscriber <laughs> because they have a feature where you can hide your subscriptions. So if you have that feature, I won't be able to tell whether you've subscribed or not. <laughs> so I gotta be able to tell somehow that you have subscribed. But if I'm able to tell, all you gotta do is leave a comment below and say, hey, I'm interested, I'm interested. That's all you gotta do. Or some people don't leave comments. Some people, you can also message me, private message me, PM me, because I know some people don't wanna be exposed, but they still wanna win. That's cool, <laughs> that's cool. Just, you know, let me know, PM me, or comment below. You'll be entered in the drawing, and then we'll give it a week, and in one week, I'll do the uh, just the random drawing. One, one lucky person will win. And it's an international giveaway, wherever FedEx ships, right? Uh, don't worry, I got the hookup, I got the hookup. So, you know, you don't have to worry about, man, is this expensive or something? No, it's not gonna be that expensive for me. It's all, it's all good. Yeah, anywhere in the world, wherever FedEx ships, that's the reach of the giveaway. And, you know, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. The Black Ponder is here to stay. You know, we got hopefully five more years, you know, let's go. Have no interest in stopping, just wanna keep rolling, continuing to go. Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> I just wanna keep learning, keep spreading the love of philosophy and critical thought. And I wanna make the case that philosophy is uh, a tool that we can use to make the world a better place. So thank you for watching. Here's to another five years, here's to another 10, and so on and so forth. You've been watching The Black Ponder. Tune in next time for more Philosophical Thought.